Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutors feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Four. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. Obviously, this is all relevant to your final assignment. So we're going to talk about it. So until today, we've gone through face-to-face -face interviews as the main sort of part of interviewing the window. Today we're going to have a look at going to use an email and why they work, why they don't necessarily work, and what are the challenges and some of the things that we need to be understanding, you know when we are completing such interpreters. So let's start with the foreign one. Obviously, there are a few benefits to them, and they are listed there up on that slide. It's obviously less stressful for those of you who might be a little bit anxious about interviewing. Hi Bobby, how are you? I am good, what about you? I am fine, when do you get up in the morning? I always get up early in the morning, most of the time at 6 o'clock. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I can't do that, I am a bit worried. You can too, it is not that hard. If you do it for a couple of days, then it will be your habit. You just need to start. What is the benefit of early rising? First of all we get a long day to work more and enjoy our time. And then it has lots of health benefits too. What types of health benefits? When you wake up early, you will feel refreshed and your entire day will be so much lightened.
We live in an age of wonders and miracles. It has been called the age of science, and different aspects of our life that changed in the preceding centuries have been attributed to science. This is completely true, but it is only one side of the coin. The flip side is that as we have advanced more in the field of technology, something fundamental to humanity has been left behind. Values such as empathy and concern for our fellow human beings are gradually being eroded due to the onslaught of our ever-evolving lifestyles, aided by the marvels of technological advancements. Today, a small child can access and navigate the Internet with an ease that still astounds those from the older generation. Computers are capable of doing extremely complicated work in all branches of learning. They can solve the most complex mathematical problems or put thousand unrelated data in order. These machines can be put to varied uses. For instance, they can provide information on the best way to prevent traffic accidents. The coming of automation is bound to have important social consequences. Some years ago, an expert on automation, Sir Leon Bagrat pointed out that it was a mistake to believe that these machines could think. There is no possibility that human beings will be controlled by machines. Though computers are capable of learning from their mistakes and improving on their performances. The borrowers of books from this high-tech book Less Library have a different set of rules to follow when borrowing books. Instead of taking home books for reading, the members of the library, who are registered residents of the South Texas country of Buxer, can now access their choice of reading matter from e-readers. Also, instead of having to pay a fee for membership of the library and for borrowing books and other facilities, the members can borrow reading matter from the book Less Library for free. The services of this library have found favor with its readers as clearly visible from the growing readership numbers at this library. Since its start in September, the country's 1.7 million residents have been able to check out and take home the machines for reading purposes and accessing the catalog.
Through his practice, Eliot solved the thematic problem. His verse plays are not concerned with socioeconomic problems. They are concerned not with the outer, but with the inner emotional and psychic realities. Thus the core of his first play, Murder in the Cathedral, is the psychic struggle of the hero with the temptations offered to him, and that of the family reunion the psychological guilt complex of Harry, the hero of the play. The cocktail party is a study in the awareness of personal inadequacies of married life in the modern context. In these plays, he has also demonstrated the relevance of religion to all human activity. The old lady was glad to be back at the block of flats where she lived. Her shopping had tired her and her basket had grown heavier with every step on the way home. In the lift, her thoughts were on lunch and a good rest but when she got out at her own floor, both were forgotten in her sudden discovery that her front door was open. She was thinking that she must reprimand her maid the next morning for such a monstrous piece of negligence when she remembered that she had gone shopping after her maid had left and she had turned both the keys in their locks. She walked slowly into the hall and at once noticed that all the room doors were opened, yet following her regular practice she had shut them before going out. Also remember, excess of everything is bad. Related to the problem of stress, excessive intake of salt is definitely out. Too much of sugar, fried food and chilies are not good either. Overindulgence and excessive craving for a particular taste, type of food generates rejasic, aggressive, or at worst, tamasic, dull, tendencies. An even more important aspect of the relationship between food and stress lies not so much in what or how much we eat but how the food is taken. For example, food eaten in great hurry or in a state of anger or any other negative state of mind is bound to induce stress. How the food is served is also very important. Not only the presentation, cutlery, crockery etc. play a role.
Today, the main reason people build dams is to produce electricity. They are also built to restrict and control the flow of water in a river. Throughout history, dams have been used to prevent flooding and to irrigate farmland. Dams supply about a sixth of the world's electricity and they significantly reduce the risk of floods and droughts. They also make water easier to access, especially in desert-like areas, where water is in low supply. There are however, some negative effects of damming rivers. Many people's homes are knocked down to make space for the dam, and flooding can occur in the reservoir, which is the area behind the dam where water collects. This can cause valuable farmland to become submerged under the lakes. The food bill is still in the works but has provoked a furious debate on the lack of grain storage facilities, rotting of grains and whether they should be distributed free to the hungry masses. Waking up to the fact that no food security program can be effective without proper storage, the government is now planning to upgrade existing warehousing facilities and also add new ones. However, between food security and large-scale storage, there is a missing link that needs to be taken note of, storage at the farm level. No one can deny the importance of decentralized storage. At least 25-30% grains in the country are stored at the farm level. The new year is a time for resolutions. Mentally, at least, most of us could compile formidable lists of do's and don'ts. The same old favorites recur year in and year out with monotonous regularity. We resolve to get up earlier each morning, eat less, find more time to play with the children, do a thousand and one jobs about the house, be nice to people we don't like, drive carefully and take the dog for a walk every day. Past experience has taught us that certain accomplishments are beyond attainment. If we remain deep-rooted liars, it is only because we have so often experienced the frustration that results from failure. We have been brought up to fear insects. We regard them as unnecessary creatures that do more harm than good. Man continually wages war on them, because they contaminate his food, carry diseases or devour his crops. They sting or bite without provocation. They fly uninvited into our rooms on summer nights or beat against our lighted windows. We live in dread not only of unpleasant insects like spiders or wasps but of quite harmless ones like moths. 
Reading about them increases our understanding without dispelling our fears. Knowing that the industrious ant lives in a highly organized society does nothing to prevent us from being filled with revulsion when we find hordes of them crawling over a carefully prepared picnic lunch. A daily walk has always been a source of inspiration. For many artists, a regular stroll was essentially a creative inspiration. Charles Dickens famously took three-hour walks every afternoon, and what he observed on them fed directly into his writing. Tchaikovsky could make do with a two-hour jaunt but wouldn't return a moment early, convinced that doing so would make him ill. Ludwig van Beethoven took lengthy strolls after lunch, carrying a pencil and paper with him in case inspiration struck. 19th-century composer Eric Satie did the same on his long hikes from Paris to the working-class suburb where he lived, stopping under street lamps to jot down ideas that came on his journey. It's rumored that when those lamps were turned off during the war years, his music declined too. While there is no denying that the world loves a winner, it is important that you recognize the signs of stress in your behavior and be healthy enough to enjoy your success. Stress can strike any time, in a fashion that may leave you unaware of its presence in your life. While a certain amount of pressure is necessary for performance, it is important to be able to recognize your individual limit. For instance, there are some individuals who accept competition in a healthy fashion. There are others who collapse into weeping wrecks before an exam or on comparing mark sheets and finding that their friend has scored better. Stress has a different meaning, depending on the stage of life you are in. The loss of a toy or a reprimand from the parents might create a stress shock in a child. Many of us believe that small means insignificant. We believe that small actions and choices do not have much impact on our lives. We think that it is only the big things, the big actions and the big decisions that really count. But when you look at the lives of all great people, you will see that they built their character through small decisions, 
small choices and small actions that they performed every day. They transformed their lives through step-by-step -step or day-by-day -day approach. They nurtured and nourished their good habits and chipped away their bad habits, one by one. It was their small day-to-day -day decisions that added up to make tremendous difference in the long run. Indeed, in matters of personal growth and character building, there is no such thing as an overnight success. When you grow up in a place where it rains five months a year, wise elders help you to get acquainted with the rain early. They teach you that it is ignorant to think that it is the same rain falling every day. Oh no, the rain is always doing different things at different times. There is rain that is gentle, and there is also rain that falls too hard and damages the crops. Hence, the prayers are for the sweet rain that helps the crops to grow. The monsoon in the Naga Hills goes by the native name, Kuthote, which means the rice growing season. It lasts from May to early or mid October. The local residents firmly believe that Durga Puja in October announces the end of rain. After that, one might expect a couple of short winter showers, and the spring showers in March and April. Plastic and its associated pollutants can even make it into our own food supply. Scientists recently examined fish and shellfish bought at markets in California and Indonesia. They found plastic in the guts of more than a quarter of samples purchased at both locations. In organisms that people eat whole, such as sardines and oysters, that means we are eating plastic too. In larger fish, Chemicals from plastic may seep into their muscles and other tissues that people consume. One way to keep the ocean cleaner and healthier is through cleanup efforts. A lot of plastic waste caught in ocean currents eventually washes up on beaches. Removing it can prevent it from blowing out to sea again. Pilgrims traditionally moved ahead, creating a feeling of belonging towards all, conveying a message of brotherhood among all they came across whether in small caves, ashrams or local settlements. They received the blessings and congregations of yogis and mahatmas in return while conducting the dharma of their pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is like penance of sadhana to stay near nature and to experience a feeling of oneness with it, to keep the body healthy and fulfilled with the amount of food, 
while seeking freedom from attachments and yet remaining happy while staying away from relatives and associates. This is how a pilgrimage should be rather than making it like a picnic by taking a large group along and living in comfort. Hi Monica, how are you doing? I am doing absolutely great. Thanks. How about you? And how are you? Are you safe during this pandemic? Absolutely. I am taking precautions. By the way, what's new these days? Well, well, well. As usual, I'm studying for my civil services examination which is lined up on May 31st. I know the date, but don't you think it will be extended further due to the lockdown? There are some really good chances of the examination getting postponed by at least a month. And they should, because the studies of the aspirants have been affected to a great extent. All this is what the birds have been waiting for. Most birds have spent the spring and summer courting and now it's time to settle down. Baby birds need a lot of high protein at frequent intervals, which the rich supply of insect life so happily provides. Caterpillars are eaten up in millions, as are furry moths, earthworms slurped down like noodles, spiky dragonflies beaten to bits to soften them up into baby food. The long-legged storks and herons get busy with fishing. As for the big guys like lions and tigers in the jungles, they too had it relatively easy during the summer when their thirsty prey came to the waterholes. Now, with water easily available, in streams and ponds all over, they need to work harder for their meals. When darkness descended upon the scene and all was well and safe the tigress called its cubs by emitting a low ha o o n. The cubs, two in number and bigger than a full-grown cat, soon responded. They came trotting up to their mother and hurried straight to the kill in indecent haste. The mother spitted at them so furiously that they doubled back its heels immediately. Thereafter, the mother and its cubs sat under cover about 50 feet, 15 meters, away from the kill to watch, wait, look, and listen. After about half an hour's patience and fidgetless vigil the mother seemed to say, paid for. At this signal, 
the cubs cautiously advanced, covering their flanks, towards the kill. As the bus climbs, the sky, brilliant before, grows overcast. I have brought nothing warm to wear. It is all down at the hotel in Urumqi. Rain begins to fall. The man behind me is eating overpoweringly smelly goat's cheese. The bus window leaks inhospitably but reveals a beautiful view. We have passed quickly from the desert through arable land to pasture and the ground is now green with grass the slopes dark with pine. A few cattle drink at a clear stream flowing past moss-covered stones, it is a constable landscape. The stream changes into a white torrent, and as we climb higher I wish more and more that I had brought with me something warmer than the pair of shorts that have served me so well in the desert. The stream, which, we are told, rises in Heaven Lake, disappears, and we continue our slow ascent. Ahimsa or the doctrine of non-violence in thought, speech and action assumed a gigantic importance in the Buddhist and Jain period. By a constant practice of this virtue, man becomes unassailable by even wild beasts, who forgot their ferocity the moment they entered the circumference of his magnetic influence. The monks and nuns of these churches were apostles of peace who reached every nook and corner of the world and delivered the message of love to the war-weary humanity. The greatest votary was the royal monk Ashoka, who in reality was responsible for transforming Ahimsa as an act of personal virtue, to Ahimsa as an act of national virtue. Besides the foregoing philosophical and religious school of thought, even many political authorities gave their unflinching support to the cause of pacifisms. Co-curricular activities that take place outside the classroom but reinforce or supplement classroom curriculum, in some way, have become a point of focus today. These activities help in the growth of the child, in more than one way. Participating in such activities helps youngsters grow mentally, socially, and individually. Intellectual development of a student is developed in the classroom 
but for the aesthetic development, such as team building, character building, and physical growth, students must step out into the outside world. For instance, if a student is a part of school football team, he, she will learn teamwork and coordination, in a practical manner, which cannot be taught in the class. As the news of the atomic attack reached Einstein, and he became aware of the glaring horror of the abuse of atomic energy, his distress and restlessness knew no bounds. He could not control himself and picked up his violin to turn his mind on to other things. While playing the violin, he tried to dissolve his distress in its sad notes, but couldn't. He was burning on the embers of destruction. His heart was filled with an ocean of agony and tears just continued streaming uncontrollably out of his eyes. Night had fallen. His daughter came up and asked him to eat something as he had not taken anything for the last four days. His voice was restrained and he said, I don't feel like eating. Air pollutant is defined as a substance which is present in an amount exceeding the normal concentrations. It could either be gaseous or a particulate matter. The important and harmful polluting gases are carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, ozone and oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. The common particulate pollutants are the dust of various inorganic or organic origins. Although, we often talk of the outdoor air pollution caused by industrial and vehicular exhausts, the indoor pollution may prove to be as or a more important cause of health problems. Recognition of air pollution is relatively recent. It is not uncommon to experience a feeling of suffocation in a closed environment. It is often ascribed to the lack of oxygen. Too many parents these days can't say no. As a result, they find themselves raising children who respond greedily to the advertisements aimed right at them. Even getting what they want doesn't satisfy some kids. They only want more. Now, a growing number of psychologists, educators and parents think it's time to stop the madness and start teaching kids about what's really important. Values like hard work, contentment, honesty and compassion. The struggle to set limits has never been tougher and the stakes have never been higher.
one recent study of adults who were overindulged as children, paints a discouraging picture of their future. When given too much too soon, they grow up to be adults who have difficulty coping with life's disappointments. The fascinating and sometimes terrifying wildlife keeps us entertained during our explorations. Bearded harp and ring seals greet us daily. The profusion of bird life is awesome. At times we see and smell hundreds of thousands of thick-billed mirrors clinging to their cliffside nests. Our charts show that we are on the edge of a huge shoal where the frigid ocean currents upswell and mix nutrients that provide a feast for the food chain. At times, these animals scare the living daylights out of us. They have a knack of sneaking up behind us and then shooting out of the water and belly flopping for maximum noise and splash. A horrendous splash coming from behind has a heart-stopping effect in polar bear country. The traditional method of transporting organs by road is referred to as a green corridor. This process entails police escorting an ambulance. So as to move around traffic usually a specific traffic lane is chosen and all signals on the route stay green to ensure it to reach its destination in the shortest possible time. A green corridor is a route cleared and cordoned off by the traffic police to ensure the smooth and steady transportation of harvested organs, on most occasions, to those awaiting a life-saving transplant. Organs tend to have a very short preservation time, such as the heart which has to be harvested and transplanted within four hours or the lungs which can be preserved for only six hours once they are harvested. The motion picture has also stepped into the international sphere as an agent of goodwill and cooperation among nations. Cultural contacts which tend to reduce tension in the world and bring harmony in international relations have been established through the medium of films. The more people understand and appreciate the past history, present aims, customs, habits and beliefs of men and women in foreign lands, the more will they realize that their interests can best be served by establishing friendly relations with them and by removing those irritants which breed distrust, lack of cooperation and the desire to punish those whose views and attitudes are such as they do not like.
As cultural agents movies can cement ties of love and brotherhood among nations and teach them to confer on each other. Globalization and liberalization of the businesses in India have flooded the market with quality foreign products but has affected the local Indian industries adversely to a great extent resulting in the job loss to poor and uneducated workers. Globalization has been a bonanza for the consumers, however, a loss to the small-scale Indian producers. Globalization has had some very positive effects on the Indian consumer in all sectors of society. It has affected the Indian students and education sector to a great extent by making study books and a lot of information available over the Internet. Collaboration of foreign universities with the Indian universities has brought about a huge change in the field of education. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You look worried. Is there any problem? You can share it with me. Actually I am worried about my exams. There is only one week left for it. And I think I have not studied anything. I'm feeling nervous. Oh, just focus on your studies and you won't face any problem. That's the problem. I can't concentrate. These all happened to me too and hence I started meditating. It had a radical effect on my concentration power. Thank you so much for your advice. I will surely follow it. The tail is important for kangaroos. It holds them in balance and supports them when they sit or fight against other kangaroos. The kangaroo uses its short legs as arms. With them it scratches itself, cleans its fur and holds branches when it eats leaves. Kangaroos are marsupials and the females carry newborns in a pouch in front of their abdomens. The babies are born small and climb up into the safety of the pouch. There, for the next 225 days or so, they eat, sleep and grow. Once they reach full development, they leave the pouch. A young kangaroo that leaves the pouch is called a joey. To keep from getting too hot, the kangaroos take naps in the afternoon and do most of their grazing at night. But the best stay cool secret of these creatures is the spit bath.
A pure white tiger is totally white without any stripe, which is due to the presence of double recessive allele in the genetic code. It happens only in the Bengal tiger subspecies, and only 1 in 10,000 births can have it naturally. White tigers are rarely seen in the wild, and only 12 of them have been spotted in India since last 100 years. Tigers have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. They are solitary animals, and are fond of hunting at night. Their diet consists of any animals that they can catch, and can eat up to 40 pounds of meat at one time. After such a big meal, they usually remain away for several days from food. Today we went to the flower exhibition. It was very interesting. My friends had suggested the idea of going to the exhibition. It was an annual exhibition for professionals in floriculture and landscape design. It was a comprehensive business platform covering all sectors of floriculture and flower business. The exhibition displayed a wide variety of exotic flowers. It also exhibited various flower species including hybrids. It was one of the country's greatest flower show including events like summer garden competition, foliage plant show, home growing competition, etc. The vibrant colors were totally out of this world. I look forward to attend more of such exhibitions. Street theater should be distinguished from other more formal outdoor theatrical performances, such as performances in a park or garden, where there is a discrete space set aside, or roped off, and a ticketed audience. In some cases, street theater performers have to get a license or specific permission through local or state governments in order to perform. Street theater is arguably the oldest form of theater in existence, most mainstream entertainment mediums can be traced back to origins in street performing, including religious passion. Steadiness is the key to success. It becomes all the more important in the modern concept of job hopping. He who whimsically changes his course of action every now and then will remain a non entity. He shall have to start afresh every time. This renders his past experiences useless. Besides, his caliber and competence find no scope to develop in the absence of past experiences. Naturally, an individual who changes his trade frequently will suffer most and cannot progress in his calling. Such an individual hardly earns goodwill, as people refuse to trust him.
the postponement of an action can prove disastrous in some cases, as in matters of health or repair of a machine. A neglected cold or a running nose can turn into sinusitis and a severe cough can turn into tuberculosis. The neglect of a pain in the body may turn out to be a fatal cancer. Similarly, a malady in the vehicle can lead to, if not an accident, certainly to delay in reaching a place, as it can break down midway. Some people like to postpone an unpleasant action. Postponement of any work is unpleasant. The more it is postponed, the more unpleasant it becomes. According to the above, the first two stages of life are the most fruitful. Youth is the age when time is the greatest treasure. During youth, a person can work hard and take risks. This is the time which should be utilized optimally. We must gain knowledge and experience during this stage of life. This age becomes the foundation stone of our future life. A wise man suitably divides his time between work and play wisely. Those who only work or only enjoy, do not do justice to themselves and the people who idle away their time are the terrible sinners. Emergency cases were being treated in the casualty ward. There was a pediatric ward for children below 12 years of age. My friend was in the orthopedic ward, where patients with bone injuries are treated. Similarly, neurology and psychiatry ward dealt with patients having neurological or psychological disorders. Women and children had special wards. Burns were being treated under special supervision. There were facilities for X-ray, ECG, pathology and medicines in the hospital for the patients to find everything under one roof. At last I came to a bit of delightful woodland scenery. I saw beautiful red flowers in a corner of a field. How beautiful they looked as they danced in the breeze and as the golden light of the setting sun fell upon them. I especially enjoyed the beauty of sunset over the river. The sun was sinking in the west. 
The western waters were lit up with a thousand beautiful colors. The sky was filled with thousands of delicate tints and the clouds were colored with gold and purple, and all the beautiful colors of the rainbow. Then the stars began to appear and a solemn stillness seemed to hold the air. Though the Declaration of American Independence brought equality to all, African Americans were not treated as such by the racist whites. It led to the Civil War and the authorities were forced to announce the abolition of slavery. Yet, the mindset of the whites did not change much and there was not improvement in social and economic conditions of the African Americans. Though African Americans had continued to contribute much to the progress of the United States, in return they could only get disappointment, discrimination, and danger. Yet the African Americans bravely continued their battle against the injustice of their life and emerged victorious, forcing their enemy to accept them on equal terms. His angry young men came about as a howl of rage against the class system. The literary elite and the establishment has been questioned. What cannot be doubted, however, is that the angry young men shook things up and got themselves noticed. Lucky Jim was a bestseller. Look back in anger roused strong emotions and the writers who followed Amos and Osborne made the literary establishment sit up and take notice. The angry young men may have been loud, crude and even obnoxious, but they gave literature a fresh impetus and they helped theater regain its relevance to modern life. Discipline claims a restraint on our willfulness and makes our freedom meaningful. It is a must in every part of life. A peaceful family or social life is impossible without disciplined conduct of the constituent members. Indiscipline causes disorder and nuisance. It destroys peace, progress and prosperity of the family, society and country. 
so it is incumbent upon all people, including students and leaders, to maintain discipline and enjoy life in its true sense. No group in the form of society, department or industry can succeed without discipline. The study of our great classics and communion with great minds. These two are the things which mold men's minds and hearts. Our great classics should be studied, the classics of all countries of which we are the inheritors. There are ever so many thrilling stories in our classics which will instill into us great moral strength, which will lay down for us the lines on which we have to conduct ourselves. When we talk about education, we have several aims in view. Give the people, those who are taught, knowledge of the world in which they live science, history and geography enable you to get that knowledge. You also train the people to acquire some technical skill by which they can earn a livelihood. Good evening ma'am. How can I help you? Good evening. Can you please show me the food menu card? Yes ma'am. Are you veg or non-veg? Non-veg. Here is your menu ma'am. Please take a look and tell me what you would like to have. How is your grilled chicken? Is that okay? Yes ma'am. We have really good quality chicken and we are quite famous here for grilled chicken. I am sure you will love it. Should I go for it ma'am? Okay. Half grilled chicken with two buttered bread. Okay. What would you love to have in a beverage? Twin is the purpose of earning knowledge as it gives him joy and power. It empowers him to face the challenges of life. Knowledge emboldens him to bear with the stark realities of life with a calm of mind. It also gives him immense power by dint of which he masters the earth. It makes him immensely inventive. However, the power of knowledge is both constructive and destructive. 
He may do good to the society, humanity and environment if he uses it constructively, and he can use it destructively by such activities which put the entire humanity at risk. Beauty of nature is unlimited, divine and full of blessings for humanity. It has always been the first inspiration for artists and creators around the world. There is vast number of works of art, poetry and music that revolves around the beauty of nature and has attracted people around the world, and which the flowing rivulets, the dancing wind and birds, the smiling flowers and the lofty mountains are only some of these beauties. Beauty of nature is characterized by the wonderful and unique diversity of flora and fauna. Their colors, variations of sizes, shapes that exist in various parts of the earth, varied seasons, and the rising and setting sun in its varied and unforgettable glory as well as the unique terrain of mountains, water, plateaus and forests etc. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment, or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago. And the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well, and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.